Good morning, I'm Katherine Poling. I am the principal of Emma K. Dabb Elementary School in Hagerstown, Maryland. We are a K through five elementary school serving about 320 students from our local community. We also have a magnet program in our school where students can apply for a seat in one of our second through fifth grade classrooms. Students come to our school specifically because they have an area of passion in technology and the arts. We have been recognized as an Apple Distinguished School since 2013, and over 75% of our teachers are Apple Certified Teachers. Every student in our school has an iPad, and every staff member has an iPad and a MacBook Air. We focus our work on the five best practices, visionary leadership, innovative teaching and learning, ongoing professional learning, compelling evidence of success, and flexible learning environments. One of the things about our school of which I am most proud is our culture for ongoing improvement and how it's embraced and celebrated by all staff and students. We often talk about how we've become comfortable with being uncomfortable, meaning we know that if we're too comfortable, it means that we aren't growing. We set goals both personal and school-wide each year and reflect on these often, celebrating our progress towards achievement and refining our practices along the way. Each teacher at our school creates an SLO, a student learning objective, at the beginning of each year. This measurable goal provides a pathway specific for each teacher. This is a statewide expectation for all public school teachers. The process is helpful as it encourages teachers to know their student data thoroughly and work towards a specific goal. I meet with each teacher three times a year to discuss their goal and the progress they've made. At Emma K. Dabb Elementary School, though, we go beyond this expectation and we customize our professional learning experiences in the same way we would want to see instruction personalized for our students. Teachers are given choices in how they learn and what they learn throughout the year based on their own reflections, administrative feedback, and specific needs of their students. As we first began our transition into students having their own device, we realized we needed a forum for sharing apps and resources with each other. We began this process by developing an appy hour model after school once a month for about an hour where teachers would informally stand up and share with their colleagues examples of apps they had found to be helpful in their classrooms. Their colleagues would have the opportunity to download these and try them out. In year two, we realized that while it's great to share apps with each other, we needed to dig more deeply into pedagogy and we shifted this time to an EdCamp model. This professional development model allowed for teachers to determine what they wanted to learn and whether they wanted to be a group facilitator or a participant for each session. This helped us engage in richer dialogue rather than just touching the surface of many apps, but we were still hitting just one or two topics at a time each month. This year, we continued to refine our professional development model. We began the year with two paths. One group of teachers opted into exploring new apps or updates to apps. Their task was to share a digital resource with their group and test it out in their classrooms and come back and share results, with the end result being the creation of an iBook that could be shared with teachers brand new to our school. The second option was to participate in an innovation group, which was a professional learning community based on a book study or a topic study of their choice. Both of these groups presented their work in December and in January, we launched into the next iteration of our work. The most effective way to change the culture of a school or a district is to ensure that the school and district leadership is modeling exactly what learning should look like for students through the professional development opportunities created for staff. For me, this means I'm always thinking one step ahead. I'm always focused on what's next, even before we finish the current work in progress. My lead teacher and I had the opportunity to participate in a year-long research project facilitated by Apple where we designed a research question. We modeled for our staff the process of engaging in action research as we work to solve a school-wide problem. We asked ourselves how could we use digital interactive leveled non-Wi-Fi dependent text being sent home via iPad coupled with parent support to improve reading achievement. After sharing the process and results with our staff, our teachers began engaging on their own action research projects. They're now at a place where they not only have identified a topic such as gender-based research strategies or multi-age grouping, but they've crafted a measurable guiding question. Teachers will continue their research throughout the spring and share out results in May. 
The takeaways from our work include personalization. Do teachers all need to receive the same information on the same day in the same way? Or can they identify a topic or an area of focus and a path for the professional development that is meaningful to them and to their students? Do teachers have choice in the tools being used, the topics selected for exploration, how they will present their findings, and with whom they work? Are teachers more engaged in this work when they have choice and are empowered in the efforts? Can we show meaningful and measurable impact based on this work? I believe that all teachers can be teacher leaders given the right conditions. It's vital for school and district administrators to create a safe, risk-free learning environment for staff. We should be celebrating our teachers when they try something new, whether it's a new resource or a new teaching methodology. Each and every staff member at EKD has been empowered to be a leader, whether on their grade level team, at the site level, or at the district level supporting professional development or curriculum writing. Each year, 100% of my staff share that they feel safe taking risks. There is pride in our work, and they're especially empowered as they realize that other educators are now coming from around the country, and even occasionally from other countries, to learn from them. Ensuring that teachers are translating these models of learning into the classroom is the ultimate goal of this work. As principal, it's my job to make these connections explicitly clear for my staff. When we provide opportunities for teachers to solve a school-wide problem, such as the one noted above, where teachers created an iBook of apps for first-year teachers to use when joining our school, so too should students be engaged in meaningful work in the classroom. The choice that teachers are given is also evident as you walk through our classrooms. Students know their data. They can tell you their goals for the year and where they are along their journey just as teachers can. Students have choice in where they sit for different tasks, in what type of furniture they work best, and with which learning tools they're most successful. We empower our teachers to make change happen, and we empower our students to impact our school and local community. I thank you for your time and I welcome your follow-up questions. I can be reached via our Facebook page or on Twitter, and I also encourage you to check out our Twitter hashtag. I wish you the best of luck in your journey in the coming months.